How is it going everybody? I am Donut and we are reacting to The Walking Dead. I don't have the episode name pulled up for this episode, but it is Season 5, Episode 16, which is... Which is Conquer. Okay, so now is Conquer the W's coming to conquer uh, Alexandria? Is it Rick? Trying to conquer Alexandria? I don't know what else it could be. If it's not one of those two. Is it just about the idea of Rick feeling the need to conquer in general? Humans wanting to conquer in general? It doesn't have to be person specific. Just the overall uh, theme of, of conquering other places and stuff. Who knows? I'm a little bit sick. So um, I'm hopefully... Uh, it shouldn't be in the edited, highlighted reaction. Uh, hopefully most of my calls will be... <laughs> kept to the full length or, or you know, able to be edited out, but uh, in case they're not, I'm pretty sick. Excuse me if I'm coughing a bunch or whatever. But uh, And that's also why I'm wearing a hat representing Make 64. Uh, whenever I feel like shit, I slick my hair back, comb it all back. It looks like shit. I hate it. So I'm just wearing a hat to, to hide my hair. <laughs> so uh, let's get onward with the reaction. Of course, if you want to see the full length, it's $8 a month. I highly recommend it. I can't fit everything I say into the, the highlighted reaction, so... Uh, Go check that out if you're interested in uh, You can also see the next uh, episode early. Uh, get get uh, early access, $4 a month. That's it. Let's get into the reaction. Alright, so we're here discussing the finale. Uh, by the way, new setup. I have moved and everything like that. Um, so I am... Hopefully going to get a different setup uh, in a different room and everything like that. Uh, also, not my mic or computer, so I don't know how this is all going to sound. I hope it's going to be okay. Um, but I hope you have a setup within the next like couple of uh, couple reactions. But anyway, on to the discussion. So we start off with Morgan meeting the wolves. Which, now we finally got our introduction to our uh, new main antagonist for the next season, I assume. The wolves. Uh, and yeah, he's, Morgan seems a lot more mentally stable than he once was. A lot more mentally stable. I think he might have had some time to meditate and become very zen, because he seems like the blind monk now. Um, like, when he's fighting, he doesn't look at anybody. He even, like, seemed to be closing his eyes at times while he was fighting them. Like, he seems to have, like, for someone that, again, like Michonne, he's fought by himself for so long that he is just now a natural killer. Like, he, it's, he's probably one of the biggest powerhouse characters now. Um, uh, so, okay, with the wolf's speech, and everything getting a return, does he mean it literally as in the wolves had bounties on their heads? Like, these wolves are, had bounties on their heads. They are people that were exiled from another group, and they are the wolves, uh, and they go around doing their own thing now. Like, set these traps to... The trap thing... Uh, okay, let's talk about the trap thing for a second. So, the trap is... People go in for the food. They open up the containers. Most of the containers open up in the uh, where they're standing. One opens up in the back. So all those zombies file out into the, uh, into the parking lot. All the other ones file around around them, forces them back into the parking lot, and pincers them. So that way, they're forced to either... Uh, die in the, like, just in the parking lot, which I assume is the main plan, just to get them killed anywhere in this vicinity, um, so they can take their shit, um, or, uh, get them in the car until they can get here, and I'm not sure what they would do, though, because how do they, well, they reset it with the, the music, but if the people are still in the car, how would they reset it, and how, like, without killing all those zombies, right? Um, well, I guess they could, uh, you know, just have someone look like again i don't know why they slit the guy's throat i was gonna say like that would make sense if they were in the car right like not slitting his throat but using that guy as a like distract like you know using him to lure the zombies away from the car and then they could kill those people in the car and take their shit and stuff like that and then reset it once they realized they were gone and they got back there and then they were like okay well time to reset it so then they kill this guy they slit his throat and then they play the music and all the zombies go back and then they just have him walking around inside the parking lot for what for what reason? Why? Why? 
I don't, I don't, I really don't get it. Can someone please explain to me why they cut that dude's throat? Like, was it, it didn't seem like they just did it because, like, just didn't seem like they did it just to kill him. Like, they sounded like they were doing it to set the trap, but I don't see how that even worked. I don't know. Maybe they put him in the containers? But the music was what drew him. I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, so, what else do I have? Um, oh, no, 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 just, just back to the wolves thing. That, so that has to be what it is, right? They were part of a group. Then they were uh, cast out. And now they have bounties on their head. Like, is that true? That could just be not at all what he was talking about. But I thought he was being literal with that. With his story of, like, this is how it used to be. And now, same sort of shit is happening, including the bounties. Which would be interesting. Because how does that work? Right? Like, if you did kill them, and then we would bring them back to, like, some other group. And that group would give them, like, food and water, maybe, or something? I don't know. That'd be interesting. I don't know if the bounties are actually a real thing or if that if that's just me being too literal with it, but uh, I don't know. It'd be kind of interesting to see how that works, bounties in a post-apocalypse world. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, this whole this whole season, or second half of the season at least, uh, I'm not even saying, just since they got to Alexandria, a lot of these people were fine before they got to Alexandria. Once they got to Alexandria, everybody started losing their fucking minds, and including a lot of people from Alexandria too. Like, Rick, Carol, Sasha, Michonne, Rosita, Abraham, Daryl, Deanna, Nicholas, Pete, Carl, Enid, Gabriel. All of them losing their fucking minds. They're all, like, to varying degrees, sure. But, like, this whole episode, especially, was one of the tensest episodes of Walking Dead ever. Because there's so many times where I'm like, I don't know what the hell's gonna happen. Like the Nicholas and Glenn thing, I'm like, I don't know what to this is happening. I don't understand Nicholas. He's so crazy that I don't know what's happening. With Gabriel, he's so crazy. I don't know what he's gonna do. I don't know how to, I can't predict anything. I can't, like, ready myself for something like a character dying even or something. Because I don't know what's gonna happen. They're all so insane. It's so unpredictable. I'm, like, on the edge of my seat, like, just clutching it like a tea kettle. Just, like, steaming, ready to go off. Oh, this freaking episode's gonna give me a heart attack. But, like, it is, I, I give Rick and Carol so much shit for, for doing the stuff they do, but really everybody is, is losing their mind. I don't want to say everybody's insane, as insane in Carol as, uh, as Carol and Dar uh, Rick was, um, and Nicholas, I think those are the, and Gabriel, but those four are probably the biggest I mean, Sasha, see, there's so many people who are, I keep being like, well, not everybody was that crazy, but no, there's quite a few of them who were extremely insane. Um, yeah. Um, uh, what else do I have here? Uh, the ep, okay, so the episode titles, um, thank you, Damage, for telling me about this, uh, but yeah, the, the episode titles, hold on, let me pull it up, um, because I, I wonder, there's actually might not be, uh, or there might actually be a few people who don't know about, uh, this at all. Because apparently even Damage didn't know about it before he looked it up. Uh, uh, but yeah, all the episode titles for this uh, second half of the season were referencing Dale's speech back in episode one about the watch. Which, boy, I had completely forgot. But I'm so glad they brought that back after they got the RV. Which makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, it, like, now either tying this all back in. But, um, yeah, and, and, and the whole speech ties into Alexandria really well. Um, uh, and these the episode titles were, again, Remember, Forget, Spend, Try, and Conquer. Uh, I like what the father said to the son when he gave him a watch that had been handed down through generations. He said, I give you a mausoleum of all hope and desire which will fit your individual needs, no better than it did mine and my father before me. I give it to you, not that you may remember time, that you may forget it, for a moment, now and then, and not spend all of your breath trying to conquer it. <sighs> and yeah, that is really what is going on in Alexandria right now. Like, <sighs> this, this whole, this honestly might be my favorite half of the season. It's, it's so tough. I really wish I didn't dislike the first half of season five so much because the this, this second half is so insanely good. I love it. I really, honestly, I do. I love it more than the prison shit. I love it more than the governor stuff. It's so fucking fascinating. Um. Uh, so like the wolves not far. Um, I, I, that that basically is just saying almost what Rick is saying. 
right? Like, it's they're just sort of, like, portraying that message out to the world. Like, they're not, like, um, w like, when it was written on uh, Noah's community, which it, now we have the confirmation that, yes, they definitely did that to Noah's community. Um, I mean, not, we kind of already 99% knew that, but anyway. Um, that, like, it wasn't, like... A, like it's not a proximity thing it is like a uh mental thing right like the becoming a wolf uh is so easy to do right um the the wolves are not far wolves are right here uh and also just in general they could be saying it isn't like the wolves are not far the wolves us are always close we are always nearby you may not see us you may not hear us you may not know our presence but we are always near I think it could be both. Um, but yeah, so, very end of this episode, I still stand with Exile. But, I completely understand why Deanna said kill him. I would absolutely say kill him in that situation. Anybody would. You know, it's a heightened sense, and if, if there was any, if there was anybody else on the Rick, uh, right, like, like that actually happened, if, it, if this wasn't this whole circumstance of we should kill this guy or not, and Pete just came in there and killed him, and everything like that, and Deanna said kill him, a normal person would be like, no, we're not going to kill him. Like, I understand you're upset, but blah, blah, blah. But, like, just because of this whole heightened situation, Rick already wants to kill him. He's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I, I I understand why she said it. But, like, I still don't think that makes it the right thing to do. But either way, what's done is done. And uh, if this is how it has to be, this is how it has to be. Right? I don't think this is the right, I, I don't think this is the right choice. I don't think this is good. But uh, if this is how it has to be, it's how it has to be. And it's for the better because these people do need to learn how to protect themselves and learn how to protect this community and keep it thriving and keep it surviving. And I still blame Carol entirely for the Pete situation. I blame her 100%. I mean, like, Pete, obviously I blame him too, sure. But, like, why it got to this point is absolutely because she fucking tested him. Like, she has been in this kind of relationship before. She absolutely knew what she was doing. She wanted this to happen. She wanted Pete to kill fucking somebody. Or just to, to get him riled up enough to where they would kill him or do something about it. Because again, she's been in this relationship. She knows if she provokes someone like that, they are going to do this. They're going to lose it and do something like that. Whew, boy. But yeah, this season was amazing absolutely amazing cannot wait for next season i don't know like the wolves don't have a community which is going to be really cool seeing how we uh fight this group without a community fight someone without a home because if they just disappear back into the woods then we're screwed we just gotta wait for it to come to us again and is it only the two of them or is there more um the interesting thing is that they put w's on a ton of walkers heads and maybe not even Walker's heads, because that one girl had a W on her head before she became a Walker. She was tied to a tree. So, we still don't really know what the hell these wolves are all about. Because it can't even be that they were all, like, cast out or bounty. I don't know. I guess it could. But then what's with all the W's on the Walker's heads? Like, they could have all been humans originally, right? They had to have had the W written on their head afterwards. Or else that's just an insane amount of wolves. I don't know. But I guess we'll see you next season, won't we? And I'll see you for that. And get the fuck out of here.